so far you've learned that reaction spontaneity can be measured by both delta G and by E. So delta G is the change in Gibbs free energy and E, well that's the voltage when you make uh, an electrochemical cell. And what links these two concepts together is the equation above there, which you don't have to learn because it's in the data booklet, but you do have to know how to manipulate it. So let me tell you what the variables are. Delta G theta is the change in Gibbs free energy. And just to refresh you again, delta G theta is positive, then it is a non-spontaneous reaction. That means it won't happen. Delta G theta is zero, that means you have an equilibrium. And if delta G theta is negative, then the reaction is spontaneous. And spontaneous means that the reaction, the forward reaction, uh, is possible. You might have to add some extra energy to get over the activation energy, but the reaction will happen. N, well that is the number of moles of electrons in the balanced equation. And you're thinking, what equation? Well, it's the equation that's going to produce the voltage E cell. So it's the equation for the cell. F is Faraday's constant. And that is in the data booklet, as is the conditions for SATP. And finally, that's the standard electrode potential of the cell, which normal people would call the voltage. So I think it bears mentioning it's that this negative sign here is doing some heavy lifting. If delta G theta, the change in Gibbs free energy is negative, you've got a spontaneous reaction. And if E cell is positive, the voltage for your voltaic cell is positive, you've got a spontaneous reaction. And it's this negative sign here, obviously, uh, that's changing the sides of the equation signs, if that makes sense. I might get a tattoo like that on my head. It's kind of fun. So let's try uh, an example question. Calculate delta G, given all of that guff there, and a part of the IB's data booklet. Copyright IB, please don't sue me. So delta G theta is minus N F E theta. The value for N, well, that's the number of moles of electrons in the balanced equation. And the quick way to work that out is to find the lowest common denominator for the electrons in the half cells. So that's going to be 6 moles. Because 6 is the lowest number that both 2 and 3 go into. Faraday's constant, well, you could look it up in the data booklet, but since this is like the fifth time I've tried to make this video, because I keep forgetting to put that blinking minus sign in until the end and then pretend it's not a mistake. I got it this time though. And then finally, you need the voltage for, these, uh, for the cell. So how do you know it's a positive voltage? Well, one quick way you could see is that this has to be higher on this list. That is having a more negative E cell. And the other one, has to be the one lower on the list, the least negative E cell. So I know that's a spontaneous reaction. How can you find the voltage? Well, there's two ways to do that. You could find the difference and make it positive, since you know that the voltage, since you know that the cell is uh, spontaneous. Or you could take the sign of the most negative one, change it, and then add them up. That will give you the same answer of 0 0.48 volts. So I'm going to put E cell as 0 0.48. Now a volt is actually a joule per coulomb, so I'm going to do some cheeky cancelling in a second. And so that gives you minus 277 920 joules. We want it in kilojoules. So I'm going to divide by 1,000 to give you minus 277.92 kilojoules. And let's follow the sig fig rules as well. 
This has infinite sig figs. It's exactly six electrons. Three sig figs, two sig figs. So your answer must have two significant figures, giving you minus 280 kilojoules. Okay. So let's try one final question. Identify the two half cells in the equation for the cell using the following data. Alrighty. So back to delta G theta is minus N F E theta. Now I've got delta G, I've got N, and I've got F. So the question must really be asking me about this E cell. So once I work out E cell, I can look at my uh, data booklet and try to work out which two half cells are involved. So putting in the numbers, delta G theta is plus 1930 joules, got to convert to joules, minus N, well that's two moles, that's in the question, Faraday's constant, 9.65 times 10 to the 4 coulombs per mole, and that leaves you with the unknown E theta. So when you calculate E theta, you've got 0 0.0100 volts. That's the three significant figures. Not forgetting that dirty minus sign. So now we've got to look at the data booklet and work out which two half cells will produce that voltage. So scrolling down the list, I'm looking for something with a difference of 0 0.01. And there it is, tin and lead. The difference in their uh, standard electropotentials is 0 0.01 volts. Now, since it's a negative number, the voltage, that means the battery's non-spontaneous, which means that the equation you need to flip is the bottom one, and then add it to the top one. That gives you a non-spontaneous battery. So lead and the tin ions goes to tin and the lead ions. Now that is a non-spontaneous battery. It just won't do it. So what question are they going to ask you added on to that? Well, they might ask you, what can you do to this voltaic cell to make it spontaneous? And the answer is, Replace the voltmeter with something producing a little more voltage than 0 0.01 volts. If you replace it with something with more than 0 0.01 volts, then this will actually happen. This non-spontaneous reaction will become spontaneous. And the other thing they could ask you is what about with the delta G? So if you put in a little more delta G than that, then again, this non-spontaneous reaction will become spontaneous. I don't remember them ever asking that, uh, but it was in one of the books, as I might do. Whew. We're done.